All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We are here in the workshop with Shane Costison from Motec Machining and Cylinder Mowers for another Q&A session. Put a call out on Facebook, I think it was, for questions before coming down today and had a few questions come through. We're going to cover off a few of those. It's going to be a short one and uh, we'll do it again uh, next time, I guess, is the plan. But um, mm. to get started, Mark Lloyd has sent us a question and he says, Shane, what is your favorite non-original part or component in the Scott 145 market? Okay, if Mark is meaning something that I've made, CNC machined here, would have to be the rear roller. That's your, very that's your favorite. Yeah, your something course. that um, um, you've got to understand how that actually works, as not many people do. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, was, was fun to make it. Um, and to replace the silly tin plate thing that's lasted for 40 years, we can't all deny that. Um, that's probably my my favourite part. Um, that was a good one. They're, yeah. they're nice as well. Yeah, like they're, they're quite nice. Plus, it was made on a six-axis yeah. machine, and we're yeah. you know we're using quite a few of the functions on that. One of the functions I hadn't used on that before was rigid tapping, so it incorporated all that. So uh, it was good. That's probably my favourite part. It won't be forever because <laughs> we've got some big things coming our way. Yeah. Um, but right at the moment, Mark, the rear roller. Um, billet CNC machine bearing housings are the uh, my most favourite part, and yes, that's how they, that's actually how they start. Yeah, cool. Good question. Thanks, Mark. Um, Mark's got another question for you as well, Shane. So it's uh, what parts are in the pipeline for you to be reproducing next, um, or in the future? What's uh, what's coming down the road? It's getting more difficult to answer that question, Michael, and the reason is... We're running out of parts. <laughs> uh, no, we're not running out of parts. There's, I can think off the top of my head probably 10 or more parts, but a Model 45 can still be made. Okay. Uh, but of course the problem is uh, people are watching everything I do, how I do it, when I do it, why I do it, and then they want to copy it. So that's becoming a contentious issue. Um, so in the pipeline, I don't know if it's in the pipeline, rear roller housings um, uh, certainly well on their way, first quarter of next year. Rear, rear roller or front? No, the rear roller. Rear roller. Yeah, the rear roller um, drum, if you want to call it a drum. Oh, yeah. I call it a housing, but right. let's so just call it a drum. I was thinking of the, simplicity. Uh, the, yeah, last, uh, no. the last question. <laughs> yeah, no. So you're talking about that, the, the drum assembly? Yep, the, the, full, the yeah. full complete rear roller. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, that's what's in the pipeline. Uh, plus another major component is also in the pipeline that no one's ever made. Um, once again, if I tell people, then someone Cats will know. just uh, capitalise on it. <laughs> so that's, that's an item that's never been made. Um, it, it's, a, it's not gonna be a cheap thing either, but if, if, uh, if we can make enough of them get the price down. So you're not going to tell us what that one is today? No, I'm not going to tell you what that one is today. We'll keep that one. What's, uh, the, what's the timeline for this big, uh, this big surprise? <laughs> uh, well, I'm hoping in the end, uh, end of the first quarter. Okay. Beginning of the second quarter, quarter. yeah. yeah. Um, and um, clutch cones. Oh, yes. I can. Yeah, I can that yeah because other people are making them, so I'm not, you know, it's. Uh, um, well, I think other people are making them, I'm not really sure. Mm. But I'm going to take a different tact. With the clutch cone, mm -hmm. um, sure. yeah. so it'll be it'll be it'll look exactly the same, but just different. Yeah. So it's something that I've been sort of toying with for some time. Program's actually in this machine here to do it. Right. It's just um, getting around to doing it. Materials here. It's just a matter of doing it. Okay. That's and an interesting that, one. Yeah, and I really want to re. At some point, I want to redesign that. Yeah. That clutch cone. Yeah. And the silly Woodruff key. Yeah. Set up, <laughs> and um, that's something on the cards uh, down the track a little. It's always kind of surprised me that that works as well as it does with you know yeah. sliding back and forth over. Yeah, well, it's got to do two jobs. Yeah, and one of those jobs is what a Woodruff key was never designed to do. Yeah, and that is slide backwards and forwards. Yeah, um, and then of course the Woodruff key has got to then drive the thing. Yeah, so it all flogs out as we all yeah. know. But we can't go and change it um, totally. Uh, straight away because we still need to provide that part mm. to everybody else out there that needs that replacement yeah, part. Of course, yeah. A redesigned thing will be something that I will incorporate into my high-end restos. Mm -hmm. So they'll 
have those little bits and pieces. Um, the only problem is, not sure if I'm very smart when it comes to business because I'll redesign and think won't wear out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have it for a long, long time. You only ever need to sell one and then yeah. it will last forever. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's uh, quite interesting. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks, Mark. I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Mark. Um, there are other things in the pipeline. I'm just trying to think now. Um, what have you got over there? You've got, you've got cutting cylinders, grooming reels, sh uh, PTO shafts, well, rear right. roller shafts. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the normal everything thrust else. pad. I'm just <laughs> about, pad, yeah. bearing housings. Yes. For the rear rollers. Yeah, I've done the bearing housings for the reels. Knobs for your yeah. clutches, yeah. clutches screws. Yeah. Um, the, the, the handlebars. <laughs> your handlebars, yeah. The rear roller housings, uh, sorry, the front reel bearing housings, um, uh, they're back in the pipeline. Yeah. So That's exciting. Yeah, but they're going to be different. I'm taking a different tact, so I'm not duplicating what other people have, mm -hmm. um, have, have embarked on. Uh, so they'll be different, but they'll be the beef, my beefed up version yeah. to um, you know, better suited to groomers and verties, but can be used in anything. Yeah? Yeah. It'll be a nice CNC build of piece that'll look nice. Yeah, the build aluminium. Build aluminium ones, yeah. The first 10 I did were pre-sold before I even made them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've been hounded and hounded <laughs> sure. uh, to death about them. Um, and yeah, we'll do them again, but other things are taken prisoners, like, like the handlebars. Mm. And I always said once the handlebars were done, mm -hmm. and, and both in production and um, that's the case, uh, then I'll move back onto the rear rollers. Uh, I've got four of the drums already pre-sold. So I was going to say that you, you mentioned rear rollers, and yeah. Keith Ratcliffe had a question: Where are the MMM? Where are the MMCM rear rollers? Well, where I'll, are they, Shane? I'll make <laughs> Keith. They're under the bench here, actually, in a, in a right. box. So I'm not going to show them to you just yet. <laughs> but there's four there that are uh, almost completed. Um, and uh, there's four more on the go um, and to my knowledge at this point in time they're all pre-sold mm -hmm. um, and I guess the other thing is um, and people can take this any way they like uh, I will be making a complete unicorn rear roller Ooh. and how we deal with that um, uh, will come to fruition when it actually happens. Mm -hmm. I've got two very good customers that want them. They both own those machines. Mm -hmm. um, so I will do them. Um, so that's the three. The triple rear. The well, triple rear. So you've got the two outside drums and you've got the centre drum. Mm -hmm. They will be the things I will do first. Um, and we'll probably use the original ratchet boxes and the pawl holders. Mm -hmm. Um, until we we get a little bit more um, into next year when all that will come on online as well. Yeah. So um, yes, the unicorn rollers will be available, but um, at this point in time, they won't be available for people that don't own a machine. Mm -hmm. This is a genuine replacement part mm -hmm. for people that own those machines that want a new part yeah. or their other one is broken. Yeah. And I've got one here that I've stripped um, that's in pretty poor condition. Mm -hmm. So it's for that sort of machine that I'm going to embark on mm -hmm. on, um, on making them. That's exciting. And so that's the that's the rear roller drum and you, I think you've got new bushes in them as well? Yeah, the rear roller drum is all totally CNC machine, brand new. It'll come in two forms. One will be grooved, just like the original. The other will be plain. Yeah. Um, and we might knurl that, uh, lightly knurl it um, for the rubber. Oh, right, yeah. people want the, 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 uh, the yeah, the rubber. The um, yeah, the rubber, rubber roller. Yeah. Um, so they'll be available for that. They'll be available in 14, 17, and 20, and 20 triples. So we'll cover everything. Okay. Initially at 17s um, only. Um, if people want to pre-order, by all means do so. Um, but the 17s will be the first ones um, to come av become available. Yep. Um, and because the the 20 inch twin, uh, the, sorry, 20 inch um, solid deck unicorn, pretty much uses a 17 roller, yep. then we'll make the centre sections second. 
so that covers that base, yeah. and then um, I'll do the 20 inch yeah. um, rear rollers as well. Yeah. So it'll be a complete new component, end caps all new, they'll be bushed, um, new bushes, uh, ratchet box, um, pilot reamed, yeah. so it's exactly perpendicular to the body of the of the uh, housing, and they'll be available in um, obviously the two halves. Yeah. And then of course I do the axle here. Yeah. Um, so um, I might look at do, doing an exchange service. Mm -hmm. So someone give me the whole complete unit, mm -hmm. and then I'll give them back basically a refurbished unit yeah. using two brand new drums yep. and the other components of theirs that are still serviceable to keep the price down. Yeah. Um, and, and then I'll look That's at good. making yeah, I'll look at making the, the ratchet boxes and all the rest of the stuff that goes with it. Yeah. Um, trying to keep it down so people don't have to mortgage their house. Yeah. <laughs> because the material um, has gone up astronomically that? to make these it's out of control. Well, I think uh, you're talking about material price prices increasing before all the sort of rest of the inflation stuff mm. started to happen, so yeah. that's uh, it's a tricky one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 every time I get uh, material, um, I have 36 metres of stainless getting delivered today. Um, yeah, when I paid for that early in the week, it was more than what I paid the last time I bought it. Yeah. Every time I buy material, it costs money. Yeah. Um, yeah, it increase. So we've got to consider that. My first one might be a little bit cheaper than the one that's coming on board yeah. um, with, the, with the new material. Yeah. But I have had an interesting, a very interesting um, uh, request from one of my quite good customers, and he is looking at wanting one in stainless. Yeah. So you need to mortgage your house to do that. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's not out of it's not out of the uh, it's not out of realms of possibility. Obviously, yeah. um, just three one six is difficult to deal with. Yeah. To machine it's it's um, yeah even the new L three one six L which is uh, is better for machining to, you know made to to assist in machining. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still hard going, mm. slow and hard going, and the material cost. To make up something like a triple roller in stainless, I think when I priced it, and this is just roughly about three and a half thousand for so just the material. And that's <laughs> it's a triple, just the material. That's yeah. material. That's, that's just the material for a good triple. Money. So good on you, whoever that is. Um, is yeah. That, will there be a stainless frame to go with it? Uh, I've, I've been, <laughs> for that price. <laughs> look, uh, not for that price. Um, uh, the only problem with stainless is work hardens. Yeah. And it's like copper. Yeah. Um, and it, it you know, we've, I cross this bridge with the handlebars. Yeah. Because we don't know how long those handlebars are going to last and absorb the impact and vibration like the old steel ones. I, I believe they will they will last for a long, long, long time. Yeah. Um, um, but stainless does work hard, and so mm -hmm. when using stainless, we've got to take that into consideration. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty, well guys, keep the questions coming and uh, we'll hit Shane up uh, with the next batch uh, on the next occasion. Um, thanks Mark and Keith for your questions today. Um, I think that's it for now, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Um, hit like on today's video. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to leave a comment or a question for myself or for Shane. You can find Shane here over at motech.com.au, the website loveitarm.com as well. Find all our latest videos over there and on YouTube, of course. So, uh, thanks, guys, and thanks, Shane. Yeah, thanks, Michael. See thanks, Keith, time. and uh, and Mark. And yeah, keep the questions rolling. If we can answer them and it helps people, um, that's great. Lots of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Thanks, guys. See you for the next one. Thank you. Bye.